Hi, we're Chris, Mal, Caroline, Jasmine, and we're, we're Family, Family Detour. Detour. We left our home in Maryland to go on a North American epic adventure to see our beautiful parks, meet fascinating people, and explore interesting places. Thanks for coming along. Okanogan County's main industry is agriculture, with apple and cherry orchards. Citizens enjoy a slower-paced way of life without the usual stressors of a larger city. In the fertile valleys and plateaus of America's Pacific Northwest, growers tend orchards that produce the world's best apples. More than 175,000 acres of apple orchards are nestled in the eastern foothills of the picturesque Cascade Mountains of Washington. Varieties grown in Washington have grown more diverse, providing consumers a range of options with over 56 varieties available. Approximately one third of Washington's fresh apple crop is exported each year and accounts for 95% of all U.S. apple exports. North Cascades National Park, nicknamed the American Alps, have landscapes with snow-top mounts with jagged peaks, glaciers, waterways, and forested valleys. Created by Diablo Dam, Diablo Lake is located between Ross Lake and Gorge Lake. On the Skagit River, at an elevation of 1,201 feet above sea level, Diablo Lake is part of the Skagit River Hydroelectric Project and managed by Seattle City Light. The lake is a popular recreational spot for kayakers and canoers. The unique, intense turquoise hue of the lake's water is attributed to the surrounding glaciers that grind rocks into fine powder that is carried into the lake through creeks. That fine powder. Also called glacial flower, stays suspended in the lake, giving the water its brilliant color. We are at the Colonial Creek Campground in North Cascades.、Uh, that's in the state of Washington.、Uh, Cascades is what divides it from. Uh, the weather from the eastern part、uh, to the western part, as you see on the videos,、uh, the parts on the western side are a little bit more drier. Kind of looks like California, Southern California, or Montana.、Um, and they were irrigating a lot of that from the rivers, a lot of the orchards there from the rivers. Anyway, so we're staying here at this campsite. It's a really nice campsite.、Um, Narrow for large rigs, but you don't get this type of view anywhere else, huh?
So yeah, this is the Pacific Northwest that uh, I had in mind. Uh, definitely not the Montana-esque uh, landscapes that we were in yesterday and two days ago. But uh, look at that. So rain, uh, you know, they call it dry rain here in, in, in Washington. But that's where we are. We're gonna head out to the visitor center now, check it out. During the entire year, the rain falls for 157 days and collects up to 51 inches of precipitation in the park. The month with the most rainfall is December, when the rain falls for 18 days and typically aggregates up to 7.8 inches of precipitation. The best time to visit North Cascades National Park is from July until September, when you will have a soft or pleasant temperature and limited rainfall. Checking out the gorge dam and the cascades. It's raining. Typical Washington, well, Western Washington weather. What about Gorge Street Fall? It's a pretty high waterfall. Beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Got my GoPro away. There's a small town outside and east of North Cascades called New Halem, where we stopped for a couple of hours. It has a gift shop, a small market, and museum about the Skagit River. New Halem is a company town owned by Seattle City Light and populated entirely by employees of the Skagit River Hydroelectric Project. So this is one of the, uh, the turbines that used to be uh, used to produce electricity here at the, at the power uh, dam. A Diablo Powerhouse. Uh, this was in 1994. Had some get cavitation. Uh, I guess some of the uh, um, the areas here were, were dented or something. So it was uh, retired then and placed here for display.
we found a silver lining in today's rainy weather. Right, girls? What did we find? Since it's the last night that uh, they're going to be shutting down this campground um, for, I believe, the season, uh, they're doing some construction. Um, and so there are only a few other campers here available. They said, oh, yeah, you know, uh, feel free to park anywhere. So we found the camp host site. So what that means is that uh, this is where the host for this campground or this area of the campground, maybe this loop, um, usually stay. Usually they stay here for several months and they have hookups. So they have electricity, water, and sewer all in the same spot. Now that's very rare in um, national parks. So since it was available, I didn't see any signs that it wasn't available. We took the spot and we have hookups at a national park. Lovely for $16. It was challenging to keep our house batteries charged via solar in this cold, wet, and dreary weather. Having an electric hookup was a blessing even just for one night. Jackson books. That's it? I'm surprised. Right. We really enjoyed our stay last night uh, at this national park campground. Uh, we had full hookups, like I said earlier. We have, uh, so this site has two tent pads. It's right next to the bathroom. That's the trail that goes into uh, the river. And then also, it has a long driveway and then we have hookups over here so uh, we're about to leave now they're gonna shut down the campground today uh, so last night was the last night that you're able to stay at the, this campground so. There are parts of our travels that are beyond our control. We happen to visit this park in less than ideal weather, although this misty, overcast, and sometimes rainy weather is what the Pacific Northwest and Washington State are known for. The relentless rain during our visit in the Cascades limited our activities in the park. We just didn't have all the right gear. The gear we did have was no match for this constant wet weather. On the flip side, this park comes alive and it's as naturally beautiful in the rain as it is in bright sunshine. Next stop, British Columbia.